the other person can have like your red mark or a scratch. Hey everybody, it's David Kohlmeyer, The Problem Solver. Thanks so much for joining us today, Thursday, 4.30, as we go live every single Thursday at 4.30. Otherwise, welcome to The Problem Solver. I am a retired police officer of 17 years, helping people solve problems every single week. Today we have, as usual, my special co-host here, we have Beja Rivera. Yes, thank you. And we have Danny Miner. Thank you. And today we have an amazing guest today. We have John Pearson, who is a scuba diving expert and also studied marine biology. Thank you so much, John, for joining us today. Awesome. My pleasure. Nice. Awesome. So as usual, you know, every single week we're trying to, you know, solve some problems, things in the community and whatever the you know topic of the week is. And, and this, it's kind of a very sad but crazy topic of what, what's taking place uh, in Lake Mead and it's getting a lot of news. So we figured today that we would speak about it and bring on an expert uh, that, you know, knows a little bit about Lake Mead, about scuba diving in general. Um, but what we're going to be talking about today is kind of, uh, it's sad, it's a very serious issue, is that they've located um, a barrel that there was a deceased person inside um, that probably was from about the 1980s or something like that. When, we're going to go to Danny to ask a little bit about more of the facts since he looked it up. But um, a deceased person, I think it was a gunshot, and he was inside the barrel, and they located because of the water has been leveling off in Lake Mead, and now there's things that are surfacing. Uh, which is definitely an issue for safety, and now there are going to be things that are going to be uncovering. So we want to talk about it because my main thing is also, like, what's going on at Lake Mead? How do we prevent this stuff from happening? Like, we, I hope that, I don't know if it's just a different decade that Vegas is in, but how do we really prevent people coming to Lake Mead and trying to drop off, you know, deceased people? It's kind of a scary factor, and I know that maybe Vegas had a different time in regards to the people that we hear and um, crimes that took place. What to look out for? Yep. So anyway, uh, Danny, why don't we jump into you? Tell us a little bit about what, what they've located. Give us a little bit of the background. Well, I, I guess a couple of days ago, and we all know Lake Mead is getting low. I mean, we all know that. Uh, what they did was there was people fishing. I mean, they were skiing and fishing, I'm assuming, and they spot a barrel, and they look at the barrel, and you could obviously see bones in the barrel. I mean, we all we all seen the barrel on the news you could see the bones actually in the barrel. People called police. Police show up. The barrel was stuck in the mud. So my guess is it's been there. What they're saying is from the early 70s, beginning 80s. So you're looking at 40 years that barrel's there. Right. The people that put that barrel there could be dead for, for all we know at this point. So could there be other barrels there? I'm sure. We all watched the movie Casino, right? <laughs> Which was based from Vegas here. It's a true story. Who knows how many people are in that desert and that lake? I mean, that's the crazy part about it. Now, on the screen a minute ago, um, our engineer placed just a little bit of the photo of the barrel situation that he had going as Danny, uh -huh. was, Danny was speaking. Um, you know, it's a very old barrel in general. It looks like, of course, de decaying and probably uh, marine, whatever was the life, you know, sure. whatever was stuck onto it in general, and then it surfaced in general. What, what else did the police say? Did they say... The reason they're basing it, and, and if anybody else heard different, let me know. The reason they're basing <laughs> 70s, 80s, I believe, was the clothing on the body. So they were looking at the clothing on the body, and it was basically late 70s, early 80s at the clothing. So that's why they know wow. there. So there's all different things. But, you know, back then you, in the 80s, you didn't even have DNA, okay? So I'm sure to be able to get some kind of DNA or uh, dental records or, or, or something right. to solve this case. They're going to have to look for missing people back then in the 80s from Vegas. But it doesn't really mean the person's missing from Vegas either. You know, I mean, it could be missing from somewhere else. They just dropped the body here in Vegas because Lake Mead is in Arizona and it's in Nevada. Half mm -hmm. the lake's in, in Arizona, half the lake's in Nevada. But that portion is was in Vegas, right? Yes, that's okay. Hemingway. Yes, that's closer to Boulder City up in that area. It looked like it was washed up. Yeah. Um, so It's because the lake is like going. Gotcha. It's losing so many feet. I yeah, mean, it's a gentle slope. Yeah, it's that probably was under 100 feet of water back in the 80s. Right. That's how crazy it's going down. So, John, why don't we hop in um, with your background with marine biology that you studied and scuba diving. Tell us, I know you did some research. Tell us what your thoughts are. Not so much on the marine biology, but the diving. I just, I just hope that something like this doesn't spur a lot of people on to go searching for stuff like that. Because there's some very deep areas, very dangerous, dangerous. areas in Lake Mead. Right. Some of the deeper spots are 532 feet. Especially if they don't wow. know what they're doing. Yeah. 
there's some areas where the water moves 16, 17 miles per hour. So it's a dangerous would, lake. Very dangerous. How do, like, what makes it dangerous? I mean, it's a man-made lake. Well, it, in areas where there's good visibility, you don't have to worry too much about obstacles. You can see them and avoid them. But if you have good visibility and you have a fast-moving current, you're going to hit things. There's tons of monofilament fishing line in there, you know, that was just left by fishermen. Sure. And that, to a diver, is, um, that's You could murder. get stuck, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, you can get tangled. Yeah. And if you don't have a knife or clippers with you or something like that. You're not prepared. Yeah. If you look at a diving knife, it usually has a little Edges. hooked edge. It has a hooked edge on one of the sides, top or bottom of the blade, that is meant to cut fishing line. You just slip it in there and so you think so the the deepest is 532 square feet so if you looked at, on a map of lake mead where is the deep end is it by the um there's actually the dam? three basins there's there's three basins uh, you know in in the course of the colorado coming down it started to fill all <coughs> these little areas one's called the overton arm mm -hmm. and there's a basin up there yep that's where the bomber is the b-29 Okay. And that's used to be uh, an open dive spot for people. Now it's restricted because they're trying to make it a historic site. Okay. You know? How many areas would you say are restricted in Lake Mead? I checked today and uh, in the Lake Mojave area and in the, um, the Boulder area, I would say that the restrictions, one, for the bomber. That, that's a restriction where you need the permission to get there. There's only two agencies that actually make the dive. But there were others that were um, advising you of treacherous conditions. Mm -hmm. One of them, the, um, the rapids, um, I think it was below Willow Beach, okay. Lake Mojave. Does that sound familiar to you guys? Oh, yeah, yeah. I fish at Wa Willow Beach, Lake Mojave. I'm totally goes familiar. It goes 16 miles per hour yep. the water's going. So anything going four or five miles per hour, you're going to be hanging like a flag yep. if you were holding onto a line or something. Yeah. I guess here's the unusual question. You know, you mentioned, you know, you mentioned that you hope that other people don't go out to search, right? So yeah. uh, we were talking about something yesterday, which we'll go on in a minute. But why do you feel that people would go out and search? I would. You would? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, tell I, me. Uh, before I'm, sure, I'm sure if there was some kind of reward or something. Back, yes. on, yeah. back on the East Coast, I used to do it up in Lake George all the time. Okay, in Lake George. I went to I the it. old libraries. You go to the old libraries, you get the old books, and it has pictures or diagrams of what Lake George used to look like when they had ferries and all that stuff, and you'll see where the ferry landings are. There's nothing there now. Right. But you go dive those sites, I found pottery, all sorts of stuff on the bottom. Wow. So you can do the same thing with the maps of, of, uh, of Lake, Lake Mead. Mead. And I'm sure anybody who's interested in history or just finding stuff like that will be doing. I guess the question is, when you say that you'd be interested, you know, just in general, that you'd be curious now, like, curious, to go yeah. at 532 square feet. What's, I mean, I went scuba diving twice. I almost got killed in oh, St. Thomas. Oh, that was the depth, 532 feet straight down. Straight down. Yeah. yeah. How, so tell me, what is the, what's the norm when people um, say sky depth? Um, for diving purposes, what's the normal depth? The sport diving limit is 120 feet. 120 feet. Now, does that stop people? No. Not really. Well, what's uh, what's that's a really good question. What, how deep would someone really go? I mean, would they can someone go 532 feet? Am I saying it right? Square feet. And does sport mean if you're advanced, intermediate? In recreational diving, advanced certifies you to 100 feet. Wow. That's okay. it. And you get, you get taught how to come up slowly, no faster than your bubbles, so you don't get any narcosis bubbling mm -hmm. out, that kind of stuff. Not to hold your breath, you don't get an embolism. But I managed to make a, well, I shouldn't say this, but <laughs> you can make deep dives. You just have to consult decompression tables, bring extra air with you. In some cases, you do mixed gas. You don't breathe just air, you breathe a trimix with helium. Hypothetically, how many depth would you say someone would go what's the most i mean could someone go am I, by the way am i saying this right 532 532 square, maximum, maximum is it square depth. feet no it's no just what, are, what we can handle as humans so 532 or? feet deep yeah. okay so 532 feet right so can someone go to 532 or no, no way oh. no so the not, most what would you say the here. most they can go <laughs> 200? I or? don't want to make a recommendation. No, here. no recommendation. I'm just, I'm just wondering. So what's, don't give people ideas. What's, no, what's the, humanly possible? The agency with, that right. I worked for, Patty, which is the largest agency in the world, 
the recreational diving limit is 120 feet. Okay. And that's what we say. That's okay. Fair. What yeah. we talk about over a beer down at the, you know, the local gin joint may be different. But, could, but, but can you go? I've, I've been to 230 feet okay. on air. 230. But, that? but one of the people in our party actually got bent. They just like, went crazy. No, he had he had some decompression sickness. Wow. Which could last yeah. forever, right? Well, it did last for a while. It was a spinal bend, a little bubble in the spinal column. Hmm. Wow. And it comes from it comes from you know guys that do the snorkel diving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they go down really deep. They're lucky that they start with that one breath of air and they come up. There's no change in right. the volume in your lungs. But if they made that dive and then took a breath off a tank someplace. They'd have to worry about that spinal bend. It usually comes from long, deep dives that are just bounce dives, down and up. This and he fellow, was aware. This fellow that was, uh, that was with us, very aware, but it was a, a kind of an illusion because it was on a wreck, beautiful wreck down in the Caribbean. Visibility, you know, you could see as far as you wanted to. The wreck is a 300-foot schooner lying on its side, an ironclad schooner with the mass sticking out into the sand. So you go to the bottom of the reef, and that's vertical. It looks very very clearly, okay, I'm going up, I'm going down. You can tell. But from the bottom of the reef out to the crow's nest, where we wanted to go, was sand, a sand slope. So visually, it may look to you like it's flat. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. When we started to return, this person started to swim a little bit too fast, not going the foot per second that you're supposed to do on ascent. But it really went from 230 feet to 180 feet. And the illusion was that it was flat beach. It looked like it was flat. Right. It was. So it's a foot a second. Okay. Wow. It gets like a very advanced. Like I said, I, I've actually scuba dived, tw- I think it's twice. One time I was in St. Thomas, I got kicked in the face and it came out. <laughs> it, it, it came out. Um, I wish we could just replay that. Like they had it on video. But I, just I, what that. I did was I was young. I probably was 13 and it was in St. Thomas. The, you know, I don't think the laws were that, you know, they were following procedure. And I just kind of swam to the top and it was really bad. They're like, you shouldn't be doing that, right? But I didn't know what I was doing. I couldn't even find it. You know, I didn't know where, yeah. the, you know, the air was, you know. And then I think I went a sec. I went a second time in Cozumel, and uh, <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't a, the person I went with wasn't a fun, a fun uh, situation. And um, I think after one day, I just didn't really enjoy my ears. You know, with what do you call that again? Equalization. 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 Yeah. What's the name of that bar down in town? Senor Frogs. Is that yeah. Cozumel? <laughs> yeah. One See night in Senor Frogs with the beers. That's when you meet the guide, mm-hmm. and the guide. You know, he has that shady look. <laughs> and he says, sure, I can take you anywhere. And there's horror stories. I bet. Horror stories. Well, just bet. know that Dave's not going to be out there in Lake Mead. I'm definitely not going. <laughs> I'm not diving. I don't want no bubble in my spine. I'm done with that. Well, th- <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's the thing. It's, it's, like spe- it's like speeding or going through a red light. <laughs> yeah. If you adhere to the rules, you're okay. You'll be fine. Right. right. No? Yeah, I've so, uh, snorkeled a couple <laughs> times in, in Hawaii and Puerto uh, Rico and... That's even difficult for me. Snorkeling so. kind of freaks me out. It's like I'm chum, you know. They're just they're spreading me out on the surface <laughs> of the wa- surface of the water. But you can go. <laughs> okay. Right. No, snorkeling's beautiful. It really is, especially in some of the nice Caribbean places. Oh my gosh. We have the visibility. So the reason why that we were kind of laughing a little bit, um, and it's a very sad situation. Extremely. You know, I wanted to come up with some type of challenge. That the question is how many barrels are down there, and the question really comes down to is, you know, how, I guess it, if you had to take a guess, I mean, you've been to Vegas for how long? Uh, twenty twenty one years. Okay, so the question really comes down to if you like, oh, mention the story you mentioned before the show. Tell me about the New York City where you're from. That when they did that with Central Park, tell us about that story. There, there was a similarity in in what people imagine is under the water. You mm-hmm. can't see it, so the imagination just takes off. We cleaned the, um, we did an underwater cleanup of the rowboat lake in Central Park in New mm-hmm. York City. It took us a year to organize it, and it was part of Patty's project aware, you know, an environmental um, gesture, if right. you will, from the diving community. To clean and up. we went there, and before we went in to clean the lake, there was all sorts of opinion that was being shared. Right. Well, unbeknownst to everybody, I went and dove the lake before anything took place. The lake was only four feet deep. 
Okay. But I kept that to myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I let everybody just walk into it. Give them enough rope and they'll hang themselves. Right. And somebody did that with the news cameras rolling and everything else. And I said, you know, you're absolutely right. We should have lines and shore tenders. And it, it is a low visibility, hazardous environment. But if a diver gets in trouble, all he has to do is stand up. It's mm -hmm. only four feet. Mm -hmm. Right. And that kind of shut everything down. <laughs> they were expecting to see syringes and guns. And we had the New York Police Department out there in rowboats. So in case somebody did find something, you know, to bring it over to the uh, police in the boat. Right. To be careful when they were searching because a syringe right. could, could pierce the glove. And, you know, you get a uh, disease or whatever. But we didn't find anything like that. We found a rusty bicycle couple trash cans, <laughs> some old McDonald's containers. So you know, you were on the job in the yeah. city, you know. <laughs> Earlier you mentioned the 532 feet. Is that the depth of Lake Mead? or? Yeah, that's the deepest spot in Lake Mead. According to the recent research, that may okay. have changed. You know, depending Which is on, not four. It's a huge difference. Yeah. Well, it's in one of those basins, you know. Gotcha. And like I said, those three basins, they're cut out by the river. Yeah. And they can go pretty deep. Yeah. Is there any, do you know of any like newer technology or equipment? I guess the question really comes down to the, it, it's kind of going viral a little bit. Like how many more barrels are down there? I mean, the question really comes down to, they found the second barrel, which was nearby when the news went out. But what happens is supposedly they're saying there was nothing inside that barrel, but it's kind of weird because it was very close by the first barrel and how many barrels are like near the other barrel. Like it just mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. I don't know if there was any, the other first barrel had an opening and you saw the body. Yeah. The second one, I didn't, do you know what? The, the second one, what happened was News 8 went down there. Mm -hmm. While they're filming the story, bang, there's a second barrel. So News wow. 8 calls the police, and the police come out there and investigate the second barrel. As we know today, nothing was in the second barrel. But like I always talk about, we're creatures of habit. So if these guys, you know, 40 years ago threw a barrel with a body in this certain location, we're creatures of habit. They probably went back to the same place again when they did this again and threw another barrel. If that, so was their favorite spot. if that was their favorite spot, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if you know, we talked about the 580 feet deep or 82 feet deep. Lake Mead is one of the most dangerous lakes in this country. I don't, I don't know if you know that. I it is labeled as the most dangerous lake in the United States of America because of the wind. Within five minutes, the wind could change out there and you're in trouble. The reason I know this, I'm a kayaker. Mm -hmm. So I'm out kayaking. If the wind picks up at all, I go right back because you'll drown out there. It, it, it's crazy. It's, it's very dangerous. And it's cold. The water's cold in Lake Mead, especially yeah, at Willow uh, Beach when you talk about that. Especially where the, uh, the dam is letting the new water off. Yeah. You know, the deeper water can get down to 50 degrees. Yeah. So, oh. you know. Yeah. So my question really comes down to is if you had a guess, because you have a, a, an amazing background experience. I'm just taking a guess. If you, Knowing that there was one barrel. In 20 years, I'm here 20 years. You're here 25 years, you said? I don't think this has ever happened in the last 25 years, right? Because the water's always been higher. Right. Yeah. So I mean, if you had to take a wild guess, if we found one barrel, how many other barrels do you think are out there? If you had to take a wild guess. <laughs> Honestly, well, like your opinion. What's your honest opinion? I have no idea. I would say probably none. And, and, None? And, really? and if somebody was going to illegitimately dump a body there, they would probably aim for one of the canyons. They were going to take them out. But do you on think boat, people? You think people that's smart to do that? Like I wouldn't know. You know. Well, I don't know. You not know, not that I mean, activity, it's, but it's pretty easy to look at the maps and figure out where the they deepest are. spot. Okay, yeah. so can a barrel like that travel? Do you think it could have? Well, came? if it's buoyant, yeah, if it's buoyant, but I would say that they wouldn't. Right, be buoyant. They'd yeah. weigh it down. So I mean, go down. one thing about the mafia, and I was I was telling Dave this before we came on. Now we're assuming mafia. We're assuming everything because it's <laughs> Vegas, and Vegas was the mafia in the seventies, right? And we all watched Casino well, and all that. Mafia, this thing of ours. That's all. Right. Yes, <laughs> what they used to call it, the mafia. They used to call it cement shoes. Did you ever hear of yeah. that? I never heard that. They put your feet in barrels, cement it, and throw you over. Damn. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's what they called it. Yeah. So I'm you know assuming. the water wash tubs, they would fill that up yep. with cement and then they'd stand you in it and throw you off, off the boat. Yes. Wow. And do you know so far if they have any of those findings and No, they didn't say. I'm assuming listen, we we both were cops. I was a detective for fourteen years. They don't tell you everything. Yeah. So I'm assuming they have something, but they're not gonna go out and tell us yet. 
You know what I mean? I'm assuming they know more than just the clothing on them. You know what I mean? I'm, did he have a light? Hopefully, I'm sure he didn't have his wallet with them. I don't think they were that stupid to put him in the barrel with his wallet because it's easy identification, but you never know. You know if they, if they wanted to find out, they could tow a, a sonar behind a boat and just do a search that way. And yeah. See if there's any relief so, on the bottom. So one of the things that I, that I you know, try to come up with some different ideas, which you may not think are good. <laughs> and we, we laughed about it yesterday, <laughs> even though it's a very serious issue. No. My thought process was, as a, as a crime yes, prevention initiative, my main thing is whether it's the police or scuba divers should be searching now that the areas are lower... It's a good time to do a search. You know, there's manpower issues. Now, there's other scuba divers. I think that a search should be done because if the water gets higher again, let's say in the future, whatever it may be. Well, first of all, two things. People, it's, it's, it's actually a dangerous area. If kids are playing and there's things that are coming up from the water, even right now on the Lake Mead, people that have boats, they're hitting rocks. There's, it's becoming more dangerous. Would you agree? Yes, definitely. It's, but it, on the one hand, it's such a large body of water mm -hmm. with so many different nooks and crannies. If you had an idea With the wind what would be the favorite place to go dump right. a body or something, you could think about doing a search, but setting up any kind of search pattern would be very involved. What about newer equipment like the sonar or like other equipment that's new technology from the military? It's expensive. It's expensive. It's expensive. You'd have to justify the reason for getting mm -hmm. uh, some so, agency out there with the toad array. <clears throat> So one of the one of the thought processes was to do like a reward if for any diver that actually located a barrel, <laughs> so, in order to put some closure in order to put some closure to the situation because their divers are out there if they're going out there. I I actually thought it was kind of an interesting crime prevention initiative for the fact that if some people found a body or another body or a barrel or something that we're preventing people to do that in the future because so maybe someone I'm worried about people doing that and you're encouraging it. Well that that was <laughs> the, listen, that I was, was the concept. That was the concept of doing it. And I was just gonna say That's why it was interesting to hear what your perspective would be. I mean what would happen if you found something that could tie you to knowing this person, you know? Right. And then all of a sudden the people that did it are still around. Well right. that's that's you know? just hey, yeah. you know, my boss wants I should speak with you. you know? <laughs> that's just freaking nuts. But um, the people that did this are probably in nursing homes by now. Yeah. Right? Forty, eighty, ninety. I just I just know that there's good intentions behind it, you know, even though it's not funny and it is a serious situation. Um, Dave brought up bringing up, you know, crime prevention. And he also thought, well, what about all the cases that have been unsolved? Missing people. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. those those cold cases, that's what they're called, correct? Um, so maybe what else can we find? How many can we uh, put to rest? Or yeah, I mean, in the in the long run, I mean, the goal is really uh, close yeah. cold cases and put you know the the person to rest in regards to the situation. So as much as that, you know, we're talking about doing it, it, look, it already give exists. The family look, some crime closure, stoppers of Nevada kind of exist right yeah. now. There's reward money that's out there in general. If you can help solve a crime. The biggest thing with it is, is that if you're finding a barrel, I think it's just unusual. It's a really unusual situation. But money does exist right now through Crime Stoppers, through Las Vegas Metro and Henderson, North Las Vegas, to have, if you have a tip that you can get paid. Actually, not that it's such a big tip, but I'm not sure if you're familiar with Crime Stoppers, but if, if it was a murder tip, and it's been a while since I looked into it, I believe it's $2,000 that you would actually get cash. You can go into a bank, use a Crime Stopper number, and you actually get cash in an envelope if you had a tip that solved the murder. But well, otherwise, I guess, I guess my focus is going to change. We're going to encourage. It. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the question really comes down to if the police. I mean, I people could debate the situation as much as it sounds crazy. Yeah. Even if there's going to be a five thousand dollar reward to saying that if you if you're a diver and you found uh, another barrel that was a deceased person, you're going to somehow the case can be closed. People that are missing, right? You don't know the family. You know, can put put the person to rest. And the money does exist right now. If you actually had a tip to solve it, to solve a crime. The question is, who's really going to look for it? Like, perfect example, if they found the second barrel nearby, there's nobody inside it, but did they search the other area? Did they just pick up that one and just go? Like, why not spend a little bit of time now that the water's lower to really see if there's anything going on? Plus, if you're swimming or there's another barrel and you get hurt or you're dying, like, in some regards, don't you want to clean up a little bit of lake meat if there's other issues that are down there, especially since it's going lower? And I just read an article saying that it's going to go down another... How many feet did we say that we saw um, online? I thought you said 10. I could be wrong. I thought yeah, this was uh, it. Like 10 or 15 feet more. 
You know, well, so, the cleanup, the, the cleanup aspect is a good, a good motive. It really is. And if you're worried about um, the immediate shore area, where you know the lowering of the of the lake is going <laughs> to directly impact people walking or you know bathing or whatever, mm-hmm. then you could search that area. But you know, you're just going to have to get an organization or a group of divers together to do that. That's sort of a. And that's then they're going to have to be trained fairly well. So rather than the reward for one person that scoops well, or whatever, that you would t- put it towards an organization of professionals that right. would do that cleanup. Right. Well, the bottom line is we're not. At, you know, the challenge really is not to, as well, to, to close cold cases, but a diver that's experienced. To find you know them, and if they if they do exist, I think people would want to know, and I think family members would want to know what happened if someone's missing. Anyway, not to beat a dead horse in general, but I mean, I thought the concept was putting some type of reward money if a diver found if they went out to search in general, which I'm sure people are going to do anyway, right? Yeah. Do, uh, how, let me right now. The biggest thing right now, the topic in Vegas is, is this situation. I how do. many divers right now would you say are going to go out? But you know what? Let's go out and go dive. Let's see. I mean, it's definitely going to be at least 10, 15. Right, I mean to go I out. I don't know about numbers, but yeah, I'm sure there's several groups that are well trained that you know if they were curious, they could do it. Got it. John, you know, how if many you coupled do you it with a cleanup, get hurt in this. Uh, do you think people search? would get hurt? Well, it, it, you're talking about where that barrel was found is somewhat of a low visibility area. Is it? I don't know what else is down there. What else could obstruct a diver? What else they could get entangled on? You know, entanglement is a big deal. So you'd have to have buddy system and. They're together and they're hooked to the shore by a line and they have line signals. And Do you so, agree with my suggestion? About what? About putting, instead of a reward for somebody that thinks that they're the best scuba diver in the world, <laughs> um, <laughs> to find something, to putting it towards the education, uh, I'm sorry, organization. Um, to do a cleanup of leaking. Yeah, I think I think if you couple it with a, a an environmental impact kind of thing, that that's that a good idea. That's the best idea. Yeah, that's that's what Patty's Aware program was all about. Right. Back and in Dave, the day. And and Danny, I have a question. Sure. Cold cases, do they always like they just don't close out until they it's don't, resolved or here, Here's the thing. I, I was in charge of our detective division when I, when I left and we never close. You don't close murder cases out. They they stay open forever. Okay. And there's like other crimes like theft, robbery. You know, in Pennsylvania, we had statute of limitations of seven years. Where a murder, there is no statute of limitations. Right. You know, you could catch the guy 50, 60 years later and still have him arrested. But one thing I wanted to bring up that we didn't bring up, a lot of people think that when you go into Lake Mead, you have to go through the little guard shack there, right? <laughs> Show if you have a pass and stuff. I don't know if you know this, and I don't even know if Dave knows this. Like after six o'clock, they go away, and you could go into Lake Mead for free. So the guards leave at six o'clock, and you could go in when nobody's seeing you after six o'clock at night and go right through them guard shacks. So if you had a body, of course you're going to wait till the guards leave, and then you're going to go in afterwards at night, right? But a lot of people don't realize that they leave at six o'clock at night. So Dave, um, six seven o'clock. I'm not sure when it is, but it's six or seven o'clock. Well, when we started, he asked, "Well, you know, what can we do for crime prevention?" Right. Do you think that there should be somebody at like what 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 is it like a, a borderline? The, like, the guard shack. You the pay guard, to get in. You know. Somebody there 24 hours. Just. I always thought there was. Okay. You know, but there yeah, isn't. Yeah, they stop. <laughs> yeah. Especially, the isn't there the um, I what they call them the. Uh, that police, the area, what do they call them? The park? They rangers, have park rangers, the rangers, yeah. Are they, yeah. But they're there after 6 o'clock, they, too, no? They're there, yes. I'm assuming there's, there's 24 no, hours, right? Yeah, they're, they're there. They're patrolling, the rangers right? I, mean, patrolling. I wonder if there's one or two. But if you think about it, we talked how about how land. big Lake Mead is. Right. You realize, if you, you know, familiar with Echo Bay. If you go all the way up to Echo Bay, it's 30-some miles from the guard shack. Calville Bay is 15 miles from the guard shack. Mm-hmm. Where this body was found was actually over in Boulder City area mm-hmm. by, by Hemingway. Wow. So that's that, that where the body was found is right in. You're, they didn't travel up the lake. It's actually right in. You, you can access the lake in many places. Yes. And you were saying earlier you didn't. It could have been from Arizona or even Nevada, right? Sure. Sure. So where's that little entrance from? Well, it's that same highway, right? Yeah. You can go in through Lake Las Vegas. Right. You can go in through Boulder City. There's a place to go in through other places all up. And the end of the lake so is Overton, know. where you talked right. about, correct? Right. So that's the all Overton the way. Leg. Yeah. And then, I don't know if you know this, after Boulder City, then you got Willow Beach, then you got Lake Mojave, lake and it goes Mojave. all the way down to Laughlin. Yeah. So it all the way goes all the way down to Laughlin. So we have another lake that we didn't even talk about, which is Lake Mojave. 
And that, that Willow Beach area is the area that has the turbulence and the... Yes. What, very what do you think, current. John? If you were in charge of this whole organization, what would you do? Like, what would be your call? If someone came to you like, we want to hire you to, yeah. to handle this issue, we want to know if there's other barrels, we want to know, we want to prevent people from thinking that this could ever be done again in Lake Mead, like, what would be your game plan? Right. It's a big question. And there's really no funding, per no, se. This is no, a voluntary thing. No, let's but say, say let's there say was funding. and say there wasn't. No, actually, let's say that there was. What would be your, like, how would you handle the situation? The funding oh, you, was no problem. You would survey the divers that are in the area and find those that have experience. Mm -hmm. Maybe even some important. police some police divers off duty if they wanted to do it. So you would. No, you would fire. investigate then. Well, if you're talking about leading the organization and trying to find people to form teams, yeah, I would go to the professionals first. Okay. Fire department, police department. Yeah. They have divers. If they got time on, you know, on the spare time, if they want to do it, sure. But you also said that you didn't think that there was another barrel out there. She's interrogating you. She's, <laughs> I'm, I'm, she's interviewing interrogation. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting back from the encouraging. <laughs> okay, you know? I got you. I, we I, understand I, that. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should make that clear. There's no <laughs> barrels, but there's a chest full of gold. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, so, those elect, do those things work underwater? <coughs> what, the like metal detectors? Yeah. You know, you can't use yeah, one at do. Lake Mead. I wish you could. I have What's one. That? You're not allowed to use a metal There's detector. There's a reason at Lake why Mead. you can't. Why? There's some shit down there. It's federal land. You're not allowed to use a metal detector at Lake Mead. I wish you could. I have a metal detector. Is it illegal? Yes. Is it illegal to use a metal, a metal detector okay. like me? Yeah. So, but now you start questioning why. Is there some stuff <laughs> so, sit there's gold there. <laughs> All right. So, the bottom well, is. I'm sure there's some gold. That's what they the say. Area. Yeah. Why would there be gold? Well, Nevada. You have, you have that gold mine. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. right the, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. So, long story short, what I, what I would, my goal was if there was divers that were out there and they did find, you know, another barrel, that there would be reward money. Of five thousand dollars, if they found another barrel that was a diver, and it would be a little bit of a challenge. But again, it was more for a crime prevention initiative for the fact that if we're locating these things, that people should never do it again because people are going to be searching for these things. You know, even if they're going out for adventure, but the goal is to prevent this from happening. The question really is: even if it happened forty years ago, has it happened the last five years? Has it happened the last ten years? I mean, do these things happen? Is it, are we just saying it's the casino days, right? It seems like this is a direct result of the surface of the lake going down. Yeah. No. And for me, honestly, um, just being a spiritual person and all, um, the truth always comes to the light, whether it's a year from now, five, eventually, ten, yeah. eventually it all will. I feel like um, this came to light and there should be an investigation and there might be more that we can find. And there was a reason why after 40 years this came up and we need to investigate further. I know you bring up a good point. Because I, I always wondered, with all the development, the housing development, and all of the excavations, how come we never heard of anything? Mm -hmm. You know, because we know for a fact from the stories that got passed down that many people went for a tour of the desert and didn't come back. Sure. You know, a three-hour tour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so why didn't we hear anything? And I don't think you would hear anything. Does if they could put the number? If they could put the lid on that, they would. You know, it's, it's just something that a tourist city is not going to advertise. Right. But I got a question for the group, and we all got to, you got to answer it, all right? Uh -huh. Are they going to solve this case? Are they going to find out who did it or who, at least who the person is? What do you think? I, I say yes. I say they will. I think if there's family still around, they will. Yeah. yeah. What do well, you they'll, think? I think they'll identify who the person is, right? Because right. there's enough bone or, or teeth, right, that, teeth, that are there. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, whether they, you know, the question, you know, it'd be interesting because the person was shot, whether the bullet, I mean, you're a gun expert as well, too. What's your thoughts with that? He was shot where? It was the He was head? shot in the head. Yeah. yeah. So it looked so what's like your, a homicide. So what's your thoughts in regards to the gun, uh, what do you call it, the ammunition? It was probably a thirty eight back then. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't even have revol I mean, I don't even think they had automatics back then, semi-automatics back then. They did probably, but... They, they didn't trust them. Like, the <laughs> cops all carried thirty eights and three fifty sevens. They didn't carry, you know, that... So do you think, what would be left? Fragments? Fragments in the, the head? Bullet? Yeah. I would think the whole bullet's in there. I mean, right. if, if it was an yeah. execution, it was either a twenty-two or a yeah. thirty-eight, and it would still be in there. So with forensics these days, not that I'm a forensic expert, do you think that, I mean, it's been so many years in the water. I mean, what type of evidence is on that bullet from 40 years ago? 
lead. Yeah, you're not going to find. You're just going to be able to find the find caliber. It. Maybe, yeah. maybe you might the get caliber. The rifling, but without yeah. the gun, you can't tie it together. Yeah, without the gun. Yeah, what they're going to yeah. have to. They got to find out once they find out who it is. That's got to be the main goal. Find out who this person is and then go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a process. I mean, you've got to go through missing persons. And if the person isn't missing from Vegas, it could be from anywhere. They just drove here. Right. You know what I mean? That, that could be too. God, they could be from New York City. <laughs> if you look at Casino, the mob guys came from New York City to run Vegas. Chicago. So wait, yes. Is there, is a lot there, of Chicago. Yes. Is there a certain type of bullet that like was stop being made after i don't know let's say like 1990s if this happened if it really did happen in the 70s and the 80s that maybe we could no not no. that i know no. of no. It, it would have to be the gun so here's here's a big question for some like major family kids do you feel unsafe now to go to lake mead and go swimming do you feel like it's not a place that you would go to because of of what they're uncovering listen i was born and raised in reno and what's close to us is pyramid lake and a lot of stuff happens there i actually had a friend of a friend um, passed away because there's like this hole that literally just it, it drowned him really um, oh my god it's scary to me um do i feel safe knowing this um i feel uncomfortable taking my daughter just because i would never want her to like see something like that and uncover that um because it's been such a long period well, of time well you know if you think about it the entire state is somewhat of a honeycomb yeah you know there's a lot of there's there's water reserves underneath there's and then yeah. the Kaluchi and stuff. If you if you take a garden hose, what looks hard and like cement, all of a sudden melts with water. Oh, okay. Not and then so. you talk about cement, and I mean from the movies and all. <laughs> <laughs> I, but seriously, how many people have do you think have been buried alive with cement? You know. So imagine I buy this piece of land and I want to build my house there, and I've got to dig up the foundation, and I find a body. Well, when, when they tried to prosecute a murder, correct me if I'm wrong, no body, no murder. It's very tough. You can't arrest... That's a great question. <laughs> you can't arrest somebody without a body. You can. But it's very difficult because you kind of need that body. So in this situation, well, we have a body. Now we have a body. But I, right. I, I'm saying like, okay, so how, what, how could you arrest somebody if they didn't have the body? I am sure that there has been people arrested that, God, I can't think of it right offhand if you could let me do my research, <laughs> but like domestic violence cases, I'm thinking of a domestic mm. violence case that a wife was missing and that arrested a husband without finding a body. You need other evidence, you know, like say they, let's look at that Scott Peterson case. Remember that in yeah, Modesto when, when, he, when he took, he threw his wife overboard mm -hmm. and then the body came up. Remember she was pregnant. She had that. She she was pregnant. So then the fetus came up, and he can. Do you remember this? You're young. That was that case is probably 15 years ago. I'm gonna say 15, yeah. 16 years ago, Sounds Modesto, terrible. California. He basically killed his wife, took the boat out into the lake with a rowboat. He had her body in a rowboat and dumped it. And the fetus then came out of her body because she decomposed. So the fetus and hit. And her came up on the beach. So they were going to arrest him even without finding that body. Because when you go through the house, you're going to look for blood stains. You're going to look if he cleaned it up. You're going to go to the store and see what he bought. Because people... Prints on the bow. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can convict somebody without a body, but it's hard. But you can. All right. So here's the story. So what I'll recap is the following. Uh, with Crime Stoppers in Nevada, if people have any tips in regards to the situation, the number for Crime Stoppers is 702-385-5555, which is Crime Stoppers in Nevada. So if anyone has any tip information for this specific case a long time ago, they can basically make reward money for that. One of the things that we were going to do for the problem solver was to add $5,000 towards it where if someone had found uh, a diver, specifically a diver that, is, that went out, was locating a, another barrel, a deceased person, uh, to put that person to rest, there would be reward money of $5,000 that would be added to Crime Stoppers of Nevada to basically help this, to put it to closure, and also for crime prevention purposes. That was it. But it was specifically meant for you know, a certified diver that goes out, not to encourage anybody else that doesn't know how to dive, because again, we're going you know, 532 feet. So the goal was to do a little bit of a crime prevention initiative, to be involved a little bit with Crime Stoppers of Nevada, to give some money to help you know, in general. But if you know, someone's walking up and finds a barrel, you know, it's not a diver's situation. You know, it was more for divers in general. I feel, you know, it'd just be interesting to kind of close out some cases or identify some people that are right. missing persons. But I think it's a little bit of crime prevention. And that's what Crime Stoppers in Nevada, you know, basically does. With that basically being said, are there any other issues that you want to share in regards to your background with marine bi biology, with scuba diving, with, with this particular situation? 
I, think, it, I mean that ties in with this? yeah. Anything else that you want to add? Because I know you did some research. Danny did some research. Just as we finish up with this particular talk, and anything else you want to add? I still think that the uh, the tie-in with the cleanup is a good idea. You can accomplish two things with one one effort. You can do the beach areas where people would, would be affected if they did, you know, right. encounter something like that. Mm -hmm. And you know, divers can help with that. You know, in the slope, the gentle slope, and just. Make sure that it's clean and easily accessible. That's all. Danny, I know you're at the lake a lot. Do you think a cleanup is being done? Is that, I'm assuming they, do they do that? I, I'll tell you this. It's such lake, a large area. Yeah, I'm at Lake Mead all the time. I'm a big fisherman. I love it out there. I think the lake's pretty clean. I think people clean it up pretty good. So I assume they have people cleaning it. I see people cleaning the lake all the time out there. Okay. So I, I, I think we're going to find more. I, I'm not going to go with him. I, I know he thinks we're not going to find any, but I don't think they've only killed one person back in the 70s, the mafia. I think more than one person's been killed, and I think they've probably thrown multiple bodies in there. And Davey has, <laughs> Dave has me on here for a reason. You know, it's the problem solver. So um, I guess to help out in the near future, I would say... I don't know. I just feel like since COVID happened, like nobody really wants to work. But I feel like there's people that are really looking for work. Who is in charge of hiring rangers? I feel like there's somebody that needs to be there 24-7. <laughs> That's or, federal or government. Around the, the federal, okay. Yeah, well, the fe they're federal so, jobs. So somebody, yeah. somebody call them and send them this video. You mean like, you mean like the, front of Lake, the front of Lake Mead? <laughs> they're federal jobs too. Whatever the, the rangers, the park rangers uh -huh. are, okay? And then um, who would we get in touch with regarding the cleanup? Is the same? They're the city of Las Vegas, or no? It's federal, so it's it's the Bureau of Land Management, I guess. Yeah. Or, okay. you know, federal. Call, call them. Send them You'd need state. permission from them to yeah. Yeah, Bureau of Land Management. They, they would have to. I agree. mean, it's definitely federal, or, 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 or contacting. We can contact the congressman, or do you think if so many people right? did it, they would approve? If well, like you said, the the lake is appears clean. It is. It, if there isn't a need, you might not get a bunch of people to respond. Right. But on we could some try. Beach, on some beaches, there may be a need. It, yeah. You know? it, it, it's not really a cleanup of the beach if we're not seeing things. What we're seeing is more and of a search to, look for, to right. find out if there's any, yeah. any other barrels that are left near in that, that area, you know? I know when we that. say yeah. cleanup. Still, you still consider it a cleanup because what you did in New York City, you said. Well, you, you, if you yeah. find a body, it's, it's, it's still a cleanup. Up. Right. It's right. Clean you're cleaning yeah. it up. Yeah. 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 You think the gun is in there? I was thinking that. Yeah. It's funny that you said that. My <laughs> guess is, seriously, if you're going to throw the body, you're, you're, you're sure going to get rid of the gun, the gun. too. <laughs> so I assume the police scuba dive there. I'm sure, because I'm sure the gun's there. Didn't they tell Michael to do that? Drop the gun? Yes. Right yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what they said in the, in the, in the Godfather. Right. Two shots each guy and drop, drop the gun. The gun. <laughs> and that's what he did. I didn't even think about that. Yes. So wow. the gun is... I would say 99% that gun's there. I, I 99%. Wouldn't, I wouldn't think it would be in the same area. I mean, why would you, not, why would you put it in the same spot right. well they didn't right. think they were going to find the body yeah either, so hmm. I, I would think it would be in separate locations but That's maybe crazy. they drove up the lake more and tossed it somewhere up there you every, know every decade I'm, as they're watching the lake come down and they're the probably level, like they're oh, going, oh no oh, man. oh no yeah oh no <laughs> hey please put the water back <laughs> yeah on. put the water back on <laughs> <laughs> all right so danny anything else you want to add to this particular topic the only thing I want to add is it's a very interesting story. I love covering mafia stories. You know, I, I'm a soprano type of guy. I love this stuff. Uh, but, hey, we could all be wrong here, and it might not be the mafia. It could be something else, totally, totally different. But Some wife that killed her husband. It could be. You don't know. I mean, crazy I, stories out there. I, I think this desert has definitely some unsolved stories. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, BJ, anything else that you think of? No, uh, really, yeah. You're going, you going to Lake Mead Saturday? Go, <laughs> yeah. What do you think? We'll have a cookout? And we'll all, for yeah. Problem Solver Cookout? I'm going body searching. <laughs> body serving. We're all going to Lake Mead on Saturday. Look, we all drink that water, too. That That's what you see? Yeah, that's right. mind-boggling. <laughs> like, I really don't want to think about those things right now. Um, no, I think California I asked... California drinks more of it. They do. They <laughs> actually take more of the water. Cal I'm sorry. California actually takes more of the water. Okay. Then Nevada. Put that out there. Yeah. <laughs> so they can stop coming over here now. <laughs> or wait, that's actually going to bring them more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. Um, no, really, I just, um, if anybody has a number on statistics or anything, I was just curious on how many uh, cold cases there are. Oh, one last oh, thing. Boy, what about Jimmy Hoffa? 
That was the biggest thing on my I TikTok. I, 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 I do a bunch of TikToks. Everybody said it's Jimmy Hoffa. Every single person said it's Jimmy Hoffa. I thought he was in the foundation at Giants Stadium. Well, did you see the movie uh, The Irishman? Yeah. The Irishman, they're saying yeah. they killed him, right? That, that, right? That's what they're saying, you know? It was actually a book called I Paint Houses. When you say to somebody, right. do you paint houses? In the mafia, that means, will you do a hit for me? You're a hit if guy. you're a hitman. So if I said, oh, hey, Beijing, you paint houses? And you say, yeah, I paint houses. I know you're a hitman. That was the, wa- the mafia's code. S- I paint houses. Speaking of hitmen, I was always wondering how, I mean, don't they, the government hire actually like professional hitmen and they just don't get in trouble? Now for you're it, touching or? on some really yeah. Yeah, dangerous so, stuff. So, I would so say yes. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, anyways, yeah. Um, no, I was, just, I was just wondering. I could do my research later. But no, thank you so much, John, for being here today. I really my appreciate pleasure. it. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's an interesting topic, John. We'll definitely uh, have you back on the show in, in the future with other topics that, that come up in general. Um, so again, today, again, I'm David Coleman, the problem solver. I have my great co-host here. We have John Pearson helping out by sharing his expertise in general. Um, just to recap in general, as the problem solver, the goal is to help people. Um, if you have a problem specifically, we have a problem solver uh, instant web app, which is the problem solver dot Vegas. Um, if you go onto the website, which is an app, you can basically put in any type of problem that you have. Um, it could be you got into an accident, you're injured, someone got arrested, family member needs some help, uh, it could be missing persons, any, anything in general that we could help myself as a problem solver or other retired police officers or attorneys or people that we work with in the network will help in different ways. And the goal is for us to be an extra resource to people. So again, if you look on your screen, the problem solver.vegas takes you to an app. You can add it to your home screen, fill in your name and information. You could also be anonymous if you want to share some stuff in general. And again, we have tons of resources on the problem solver dot Vegas. Again, I'm David Kohlmeyer. 702-999-1111 is the phone number for the problem solver. Again, 702-999-1111. Remember the police is 911, but the problem solver is 999-1111. Uh, if you have any problems whatsoever, again, I'm David Kohlmeyer, retired police officer helping people with my team. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing you guys next week, Thursday, 430, which is live, and Tuesdays, Channel 14, uh, Cox Cable, 6 p.m., Be safe, be careful, and watch out for each other. Have a good day.